Tested. Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. Norm from Tested. Windows Phone 7, it's here, we have it. It's blue, it turns out. Uh, wait, so wait. Mine is red. Chris is, what, 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 what the what? Uh, so, okay, Windows Phone 7 came out yesterday. We spent some quality time. Uh, I took home the Samsung Focus, which is the AT&T version of the Samsung uh, Windows Phone 7 phone. And I have the HTC Surround, which is uh, the HTC uh, Windows 7 phone for AT&T also. Is it called the Surround because it's like a headset? Or? No, it's called the Surround because there are surround speakers. It's a slider, but not a slide keyboard. Bananas. Crazy speaker on top. That is crazy bananas. Okay, so yours is made by HTC. Yes. The thing about Windows Phone 7 is that Microsoft really tightly controls the hardware spec. So there's not a ton of variation in like the core stuff. They're all running like one gigahertz. One gigahertz CPUs. ARM processors. Yeah. That's probably a hummingbird. This yes. is probably a Snapdragon. Basically, it's like Cortex A8 is yes. the minimum, I think. So the minor differences in the phones are going to be the cameras, five megapixel camera, five megapixel camera, five megapixel camera. Uh, mine has a dedicated shutter button. Mine has a dedicated shutter okay. button. Okay, very standard so far. Three hardware buttons. Mine has three hardware buttons as well. Mine's 3.8 inch screen. Mine is four inches. And for some reason, mine is incredibly heavy. Mine is very light and doesn't have a slide out. It doesn't have any kind of weird speakers or anything. So, okay, so uh, let's see. Anything else about the Windows Phone 7? The buttons are all standard. Basically, there's a search button, a home button, which takes you to the home screen, and then the back button. Uh, those are the last, all last super, app super standard. That you were in. Uh, hardware or volume buttons on the side, but there is no mute button, physical mute button like there is on the iPhone. Uh, what there is, if you click any of the volume buttons, a menu will pop down and you can tap yeah. it so it turns to vibrate. And it's interesting because that also shows like what the last song you were playing was if you were listening to music. So uh, let's, you want to jump into software and, and show let's people what dive the, into the software. That's the real the story. Like. Yeah. We're going to review these phones. I'm using this for a month. I have a SIM card adapter, uh, t not using my iPhone 4, putting the SIM card Norm's off phone. the needle. I'm going to take his iPhone away. Okay, so this is the lock screen. One of the things that's interesting about the Windows Phone 7 phones is they actually put a lot of information on the lock screen. They put the time, the day, the date, uh, what your next appointment is, and then if you have any messages coming in on Twitter, or Facebook, or actually I guess not Twitter, but email, SMS messages, stuff like that, they show up down here along the bottom. Uh, I don't have one right now, maybe we'll get one in a second. And you can change the wallpaper. And you can change the wallpaper. This one I actually think is pulling from Bing right now, so uh, I haven't gotten in far enough to learn how to do that yet. Uh, the next thing you see is that it, the phone uses the Metro interface, which was, I think, first introduced in the Zune HD, right? Uh, it's a little different. Yeah, it's a, well, it's modified, yeah, but it, the, the kind of core tenants are the same. They use fonts and white space and stuff like that to, to delineate uh, you know, different areas of the UI rather than straight boxes. Uh, on this one, each of these boxes is, represents a different kind of data or a different app. So, like this one is the phone app. Uh, it tells me which, what I'm connected to right now. I'm connected to the microcell in the office. Uh, I can go check voicemail by calling that number or whatever. It doesn't seem to have visual voicemail. Uh, I haven't called and set up the, my account to use a Windows 7 phone yet. Uh, but this is actually my contacts. And, and like Android or the, or the pre-WebOS or any number of other things now, it actually syncs my contacts with Facebook, uh, with my contact list on my mail provider, and, uh, well, I guess that's probably it. Both of my mail providers in this case. And we'll even tell you, like, you know, how many people, how many places they're synced up and all that. There's a Gmail pre preset for email accounts, and it'll let you import contacts, calendar, all that kind of stuff. But of course, it'll also do Exchange. Oh, it'll also do Exchange for sure. I don't think it syncs directly with uh, Outlook. So if you're using Outlook without Exchange, then that's no good. And then, of course, you can see the never ending feed of what's happening with your friends and coworkers. Immediate and access to the wall. It's right there. The wall is is in rare form on this phone. We go back to the home screen. Uh, the next thing is let's look at mail. Mail, I, I quite like these mail apps. Uh, like I said, the first thing you notice is that the font is huge. Uh, and they put the person's name that's emailing you up front because frequently that's the thing that's important to me, I feel like. And the tiles on the, the main screen are dynamic. So if you have an unread message, yeah, when it, I, it will show a number. When I get a new message, it'll pop a number up. Like this five next to the marketplace means there's five app updates in the marketplace right now. Same thing happens with Gmail, with phone calls for missed calls, with the text messaging app. How's the web browsing? Uh, web browsing is interesting. I, I never thought I'd say this, but this is actually quite a nice implementation of uh, Internet Explorer. So I'm going to go to Tested, see how that works. I tested out our sites on this. We definitely have a little bit of optimization work to do for IE. Uh, I'm going to hand off my phone to Mike Horn or one of those guys as soon as he's back in the office to see if they can help us out and, and do a quick pass and do, get the do mobile a, Do a working. landscape turn. Landscape. 
Check out that animation. Yeah, it shrinks and spins and then expands. It's crazy. And the the zoom, the pinch of zoom is hella fast. More important to me, the double tap to zoom in on the right column works really well on this phone. It's something that n never ever works on Android phones and has been a source of, source of frustration. Yeah, it says we need to download Flash. Okay, so Flash doesn't work. Uh, just found that out for the first time. We're testing live. Microsoft gives a lot of different icon views into the same thing. So for example, this People app right here is the same as the People tab in the phone app. And you go here and it's just the list of Facebook contacts, all the contacts from the phone, and uh, you know the, the wall updates. Uh, so aside from the main tiles, there's also the app list. Now if you buy a ton of apps, on your Windows Phone 7, uh, there's not really a good way to sort them except for the alphabetical list. If you go hit the home home menu and scroll, yep, that's it. That's your entire yeah. list. I don't find this to be a bad way to do this. I mean, it's similar to what Android does with their, like, the drawer uh, view. Except the drawer view is, is a, you know, four in a row. That's true. And, and here is one long list. I don't know. I, I don't find this too terribly offensive. I don't have a ton of apps yet, so ask me again in a week and all. It does come with um, Office from Windows Phone 7, so you can edit Word documents. Uh, I found the That's text crazy. editor was pretty good. Um, you can change fonts and all sorts of stuff. PowerPoint presentations even. The media player is actually kind of interesting. It's not, a, it's, the built-in media player is much better than the built-in one for Android. It's Zune. Well, the one for Android is terrible. Yes. I mean, this is, this I really like. This right. is actually Zune. Zune, if you had a Zune HD, this, it, you'll be super familiar with this. It ties into the marketplace so you can actually buy. And it syncs with your, your Zoom software for Windows. You can sync over the air too. When the album, when it knows what the album is, it'll actually pull art from like liner notes and other places that are similar on the interwebs. Like that background image? Like that background image. So this is album art. This is a picture from the liner notes or something like that had you actually gone out and bought a CD. Uh, and again, if you want to control this without having to go into the Zoom app, hit you can just hit the volume button. button and you get the quick menu all the time. And you can switch the phone to vibrate or ring or whatever. Uh, so this is video. I'm playing. I usually do the road for this because I don't think they'll sue us, and I'm pretty sure DreamWorks would. Uh, but can I fast forward? Seems like I have to do chapter stops. Oh, it's it's fast forwarding in a couple of 40 second increments or something. You can't like touch that. it and slide. My, I have fat fingers. That that's another thing. Some of the buttons are really small. Some of the UI buttons are very small. But video quality looks pretty good. I think the zoom automatically down converts anything you put onto this device to be resolution to screen, uh, WVGA or whatever which is kind of good, kind of bad. If I actually hooked this up to a TV, I'd be a little pissed off about that. But for watching on the phone, I don't need to carry a four gigabyte you file. You have no HDMI out anyway. Yes. Maps another instance where it uses very tight Bing integration. And so it's using Microsoft's proprietary uh, C-Dragon um, streaming. So it's very smooth. When you pinch and zoom, it, when you, like, if you zoom all the way in. I'm zooming. And as long as you have a decent connection, it, it's just like Bing Maps, how uh, the map updates. Oh, Whoa. you're getting a phone call. You should probably... Should I ignore that or answer it? Let's answer it for comedy value. Hello? It's a fax machine. I wanted to put them on hold. Fuck those guys. And you go all the way close, closer, closer. Closer? Closer. Cl still closer? Still closer, automatic hey, look, transition to satellite. Wow, that's crazy. Which I, I think is very neat. I think that's pretty cool. I don't know that I'd ever use that, but I think it's cool. It has there a compass is, and There all is that stuff no uh, street view, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm up and down on Marketplace. I'm going to go ahead and say that up front. You don't like the, the way the Marketplace does some... There are some things about the Marketplace I profoundly do not like. All right. Well, what do you like, first of all? Oh, you want to do what I like first? Okay. Uh, so the first thing is uh, everything's pretty easy to find. There's not a ton of apps yet, so, you know, it's difficult to, to judge too much how discoverable stuff is. Oops, that was the wrong tab. Go back. Uh, but, I mean, they do a pretty good job of exposing good content right at the top of the list, which is the hard thing to do and what Android Marketplace still kind of doesn't do particularly well. Uh, if you want to buy stuff, it is dead, dead simple. And even better, there are trials for all the games. So if you've spent any money at all on iPhone games, iOS games, you know how kind of hit or miss that whole iOS gaming experience can be. And I mean, there are many, many games that if I had had 10 sec seconds to play them, I never ever would have bought. To try something out, you click the try button. It says, oh, hey, this is the blob. You should try this and install it. And then it'll actually let you play the game, run through the first few minutes, 
Uh, it eventually pops up with a prompt, kind of like Xbox Live Arcade games do, that says, hey, uh, yeah, if you want to keep playing, you have to give us some money. Or you can just delete the app. It's, it's really good. You can see stuff from the same developers, all that kind of stuff. It's a really fully featured app store, uh, with one exception. What's the exception? Well, when I search for something like, uh, hmm, what I, let's search for Pandora. Because, you know, I'd love to have a Pandora app for my Windows 7 play. Search for Pandora. Oh, what's this? What, artist, album, song, huh? Playlist? So it searches not only the app store, but it also searches also the music, music store. Also and video. It's one marketplace, one, one shared marketplace. So this, this music tab takes me to the Zune marketplace, where mm -hmm. I can buy songs, whatever. If I want to buy the new CeeLo song album, I totally can. But you can't search within just that category. You can't search just within a category, which seems like a huge oversight since there's so many songs in the, in the Zune store. There's going to be inevitable confusion. Hope they patch that. I would hope Speaking so. Speaking of games, let's take a quick look at Xbox Live. Now, I saw Xbox Live. The number one thing is you have to download this additional Xbox app. Yeah, I mean, I run. think that's, that's probably just because they didn't get it done in time to get it on the hardware, right? Okay. So the basic interface is you get, you get your profile and you get to launch your games. It's just a, an app launcher for the games. I think I'm editing my avatar. Hmm. Or I'm just having a white. Maybe I launched a flashlight app by accident. It's pretty good so far. Okay, so yeah, here's my avatar. You can see what he looks like. He's wearing his costume just like he is on Xbox Live. But you have to, if you want to actually edit it, you have to download Xbox Live Extras. I which have is a downloaded separate that. App. And if you launch that app, it will load up an app and it will render your avatar in 3D. And here, is where you get to actually check your messages, um, see what see your friends are doing online, uh, check your achievements, and you actually get achievements for playing Windows Phone 7 games. Only the Xbox enabled ones. Right. There are a bunch of normal, kind of crappy shovelware, iTunes style uh, games. The ones, only certain ones show up, like for example, this Glow Artisan game is a phone game uh, that's only on Windows Phone 7, or, and I think Xbox Live. Microtransactions. And you can you can get normal achievements. I mean, it's, it's oh, achievements. A, yeah, achievement. these are achievements. We'll jump in the games in a in a app of the week video. Maybe you can do friend requests and all that stuff. You can really deny a friend request. One of the things that's interesting is this actually shells out to a web browser. So this is just going to a special web browser on web web page on Xbox.com, where you can add, deny or accept friend requests. Uh, I don't know either of these people. Sorry, dudes. The big problem I have with this is that. These are bad, kind of badly designed web pages. You have to really be precise when you're hitting that button, or else it doesn't work. Windows Phone 7, that's the first look. We'll be back with full reviews later. I, I'm really pleasantly surprised at how this is like, is like in the real snazzy. world. It's fast, it does all the stuff that I wanted to do, it works with non Microsoft stuff. The keyboard, we didn't talk about the keyboard. The keyboard is fucking awesome. I like the keyboard. Really, really good. They have a comma key and an emoticon key if you're into that whole thing. So, emoticon keyboard. Yeah, the a whole array separate of emoticons. Dozens of emoticons at your fingertips. I will learn to love you, yes. even though you're not an iPhone.